Myth and mistake number eight, eating wrong. Besides working out, your body needs enough rest and good food. Sometimes people eat too little or too much. You need to balance your food intake and get enough nutrients. Mike has told you some of the main reasons why people fail in fitness. Now, the question is, how do you build muscles the right way? Chapter 6. The Real Science of Muscle Growth The principles governing muscle growth can be likened to those of physics. Individuals with exceptional physiques have followed these practical principles and passed them down to subsequent generations. Now, all you have to do is embrace these principles and witness their effects firsthand. The first law of muscle growth, muscles grow only if they're forced to. Engage in heavy lifting. Muscle growth occurs through a process known as hypertrophy, where the body repairs small tears in muscle fibers caused by lifting weights. This adaptation enables muscles to grow and support the changes. The second law of muscle growth, muscles grow from overload, not fatigue or pump. Continue with heavy lifting, but not excessively. Short and intense lifting sessions are ideal for inducing micro tears in your muscle fibers, which contribute to muscle development. Moreover, the presence of lactic acid stimulates the production of growth hormones, which proves highly advantageous. However, remember that excessive strain hampers muscle growth, and without overloading the muscles, growth is unlikely. The third law of muscle growth, muscles grow outside the gym. Adequate rest is crucial, allow your muscles to recover after each lifting session. This enables them to adapt to the changes and effectively build muscle overnight. For optimal muscle growth, it is recommended to get around 8 hours of sleep. The fourth law of muscle growth, muscles grow only if they're properly fed. Adopt a suitable diet. Nutrition plays a significant role, accounting for 70% to 80% of your overall physique. It is the most important factor in muscle building. To identify the appropriate dietary plan, thinner, leaner, stronger will provide guidance, ensuring you avoid diet-related mistakes in the future. These four principles serve as the foundation of thinner, leaner, stronger, and Mike advises you to strive to remember and apply them during your training. Chapter 7. The 5 Biggest Fat Loss Myths and Mistakes Many women want to have a slim and fit body like models and celebrities. They think it is very hard to get that kind of body. They think they need to give up a lot, work hard, and learn a lot. But that is not true. You can get the body you want with three things, goal, knowledge, and effort. First, Mike says you need to have a clear goal. Many people fail because they don't have enough willpower. Second, you need to know what to do and what not to do. You don't want to waste your time and energy on things that don't work. Mike will tell you some myths and mistakes about fat loss. Myth and mistake number one, counting calories is unnecessary. Calories are the energy in food. To lose fat, you need to burn more energy than you eat. If you eat too little or too much, your diet will not be balanced. Mike says many people don't like to plan their meals. That's why they don't count calories. Myth and mistake number two, do cardio equals lose weight. You need to know when cardio works and when it doesn't. Mike says cardio helps you burn calories and boost your metabolism. Metabolism is how fast your body uses energy. Your body burns some energy even when you are not active. This is called the basal metabolic rate or BMR. If you add BMR and the energy you use for activities in a day, you get your total calorie use for a day. But if you eat more calories than you use, even with cardio, you will gain weight. Myth and mistake number three, chasing the fads. There are many diet plans and tips in the media. They make people confused and switch their routines often. This makes them get worse results. Mike says thinner, leaner, stronger will show you how simple it is to get the lean body you want. He will also show you how wrong other messages are. Myth and mistake number four, doing low weight and high reps builds lean muscle. You need to challenge your muscles enough to get lean. Doing low weight with high reps only makes you better at endurance. The key is to use enough weight and do the right number of reps. Myth and mistake number five, spot reduction. Some people try to lose fat in certain areas by doing specific exercises. But this doesn't work. Everyone has different genes that affect where they store fat. You can't tell your body where to lose fat first. The best thing you can do is follow a routine and let your body decide. Chapter 8. The Real Science of Healthy Fat Loss Our bodies view muscle as a liability while fat is considered an asset. In the past, our ancestors would travel for days without food except for the stored fat they have for survival. Likewise, our present bodies store fats as energy reserves when we fail to provide it proper food source. To make your fitness routines effective, you must convince your body that it has no reason to store surplus fats. Plus, you must provide your body a good enough condition to allow development of muscles. The first law of fat loss, eating less than you expend equals weight loss. 
The relation between the energy consumed versus the energy we expend is the basic underlying rule of the human body. Fat loss depends on how the relationship is maintained. When you eat food with calories that are greater than what your body can burn, then your body stores the excess fats. Otherwise, your body burns the stored fats you already have. However, if you do not provide yourself with enough food, your body goes into starvation mode, and you start losing your muscles too together with your fats. The second law of fat loss, eat on a schedule that works best for you. It is much advisable to distribute your burnable calorie intake throughout the day and decide what meal plan timing is best for you. The third law of fat loss, use cardio to help burn fat. Doing cardio does not necessarily equate to burning fat, but it does help increase your metabolic rate and accelerates your body's ability to burn calories. Just remember that it is more important to regulate your calorie intake while doing cardio. Chapter 9 the inner and outer games of health and fitness. Many women give up on training after three months because they don't see the changes they want. But you are lucky because this book can help you get results that make you want to keep going. Thinner, Leaner, Stronger has two parts, the inner and outer games. The outer game is about what you need to do to get fit and strong. The inner game is about how you think and feel about your training. For many people, the hardest part is staying motivated and disciplined. To help you with that, Mike has some tips for you to follow. They will help you stick to your plan and reach your goal. Chapter 10. How to make fitness goals that will keep you going. Before you start working on your body, you need to have clear and realistic goals in your mind. Mike says that people who go after goals that are too hard or vague are the ones who give up easily. To make a plan that will motivate you, you have to choose goals that are right for you. Mike could tell you some things that he thinks could make you want to work out, but only you know what really matters to you. And it has to be specific. Step 1. How do you want your body to look like? Think about the kind of body you want to have. It's okay to look online for some examples. Find a picture of someone who has the body you want and use it as a guide. Step 2. How do you want your health to be like? A study by some experts in the US showed that having a fit and strong body can help you live longer and avoid heart problems. By working on your body, you will also get healthier. This is another reason to stick to the plan. That's why you need to make a health goal that speaks to you. Step 3. Why do you want these goals? After you know what kind of body and health you want, the next step is to figure out why you want them. Is it because you want to feel better about yourself, get more attention from others, or maybe just to play your favorite sport without getting tired? Well, this is up to you so write down whatever makes you excited. This will be your motivation sheet. Whenever you feel like quitting, look at it and Mike promises that it will help you stay on track. If your goals change, then change the sheet too. Chapter 11. The code of a good training partner. A good training partner can make all the difference. A partner can hold you accountable for sticking with your training routine and the presence of someone else will motivate you on your down days. Mike recommends finding a training partner and following these six commitments. The code of a good training partner. 1. I will attend every training session or inform my partner as soon as possible if I can't avoid missing out. 2. I came to train and not to chat. I am willing to stay focused and committed to our workouts to accomplish the routine efficiently. 3. I will exert effort in training to serve as a good role model for my partner. 4. I will do my best to motivate my partner and push her to train to her fullest. 5. I will be supporting my partner on the way and recognize her accomplishments. 6. I will encourage my partner to stay committed to our workout sessions. I will not be accepting excuses to skip from the routine. However, if it is a valid excuse, I will wholeheartedly reschedule for the soonest time available. If you follow these commitments, it would allow both of you to push each other in the right direction. If your partner does or believes otherwise, then Mike advises that you change your partner and find someone much more open to adhering with these principles. Chapter 12. If you can't measure it, you don't know it. Sir William Thompson said that if you can't measure something in numbers, you don't know enough about it. This is true for diet and exercise too. Keeping track of your progress in numbers can help you know if you're on the right track. Mike suggests keeping a diet journal to track your progress. Many women give up because they don't see improvement. Without a journal, it's easy to get frustrated. The training journal. Gaining muscle takes time. At first, you'll see quick improvements in strength and lifting ability. But as your muscles adapt, progress slows down. When this happens, gradually increase your reps and weight each week. Write everything down in a training journal instead of relying on memory. How to keep a training journal. You can use a notebook or a device to keep your journal. Write down your training plan, body parts you're working on, rest days, and your weight. Each week, check your progress and decide if you can add more weight or reps. Also write down how you felt during each exercise. Mike says there are also mobile apps that can help you track your progress. The Diet Journal 
Creating a diet journal involves figuring out your daily needs and planning meals that meet those needs. Eating the same meals every day can be boring but effective. If you want variety, plan it instead of choosing meals randomly. Use a device or notebook to plan your meals. Figure out how many calories, proteins, fats, and carbs you need each day and turn them into meals. Plan two or three sets of daily meals and rotate them throughout the week. Mike recommends two websites for diet planning, CalorieKing.com and CalorieCount.about.com. Failing to plan can lead to failure. Many people don't get the results they want because they don't have specific plans to achieve them.